Ba -ba -bum -bum. Greetings and welcome to another inquisitorial analysis. This time, the 2020 presidential election. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens so that we all know no hindsight is 2020 here. For those of you not from the U.S., consider this a primer on esoteric U.S. history and government. Okay. First, all of this chaos that you see happening with contesting the elections and everything, it is not chaos. It is planned. Everything that you see happening right now is 100% carefully planned in advance. It is, trust me. Now, number two. The founding fathers, the people who write the Constitution, they did not like the idea of a popularly elected president. Why? because they believe that the average person is stupid and they are very correct about this. So what did they do? They had two groups of people actually. One wanted the Congress to select the president, but working with Congress, they also knew that most Congress people were also incredibly stupid people. So they couldn't completely ignore the idea of a popular election. This means that they came up with a compromise between a popular election and Congress selecting the president. This is called the Electoral Congress. Each state, according to its population, will have enough, will have electoral college votes. Those votes will then be used to select the president. That is, like I said, the middle, the middle ground between Congress selecting a president and a popular vote selecting a president. Okay, that's the way it is for the vast majority of elections. Now, what happens when a president refuses to concede or a candidate refuses to concede and challenges an election result? That is where we are now. Donald Trump is going to challenge the electoral result. He is not going to concede. No matter what happens, the result is going to come in, the votes are going to be counted, everything's going to say he lost, and he's going to say, no, I didn't. I refuse to accept that. I'm going to explain why. But first, I have to take you through this step by step. First, the popular vote. He's going to challenge the popular vote and say, I don't accept that. He's going to get uh, uh, Republican-controlled states to not certify their elections, to claim that they just cannot determine with absolute certainty that there was no fraud in the election. Is this true? No. It's total BS, but that's what he's going to get people to say. All right? Now, in the year 2000, this is as far as Al Gore got with Florida, the contested Florida election, popular election results. They took it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, certify the election, and Al Gore dropped it. That was wrong. The Supreme Court has absolutely nothing to say about certifying elections. Al Gore should have completely ignored them. The Constitution is clear. This goes from popular vote to electoral college result to a congressional result if that doesn't work. It does not 
go to the Supreme Court. But the Democrats have losing in their blood. It's just a part of their DNA. So what did Al Gore do? He just said, okay, I quit. I'm a loser. And the rest is history. Trump is not going to do that. He is going to contest the popular vote. And what will happen next is that if the popular vote cannot be determined in those states, then the electoral college votes of those states will not be counted. So now, Biden will need to reach 270 electoral college votes without counting the states, results in states where Trump has um, challenged the results. Now remember, he only has to challenge enough results to make sure Biden does not get 270 electoral college votes. If Biden is able to get 270 electoral college votes, then challenging the popular vote doesn't matter because he will win the electoral college vote and still become president. So that's kind of the second stage, the second election. Now, if Trump is able to make sure that Biden doesn't get 270 electoral college votes, we now go on to stage three of the election, and this has only happened three times in U.S. history. Um, when we cannot determine, when we cannot get a majority of electoral college votes, the Constitution then says the matter will then go to Congress in what is called a contingent election. Congress will then hold its own presidential election. Yes, it's true. Um, which will determine the presidency. In this case, many people think, oh, that's no problem. Then every congressman will just vote for who they want to be president, and there's more Democrats in Congress than, than uh, Republicans, so what's the point in doing that? It's easy. It's simple. We still win. Wrong. You're very, very wrong. Go read the freaking Constitution. What the Constitution says is that each state's delegation will get one vote in the presidential election. Yes. So that means even though California has some 400 plus uh, electoral college votes and has some, I don't know, 60 plus representatives, California, the state, will only get one vote in the congressional presidential election. Now, let me ask you a hypothetical question. How many uh, red states, as they call them, are there? That means how many states different states are there that have a, um, a, a, a Republican governor. Because the, Republic, the, the governor determines who the congressional declaration, uh, uh, delegation is going to be. Um, hmm. Take a guess. It's 26. Are you starting to understand their grand plan now? There's 26, even though the Democrats have an overwhelming majority in terms of the number of representatives in the House of Representatives, 26 Republican governors right now, okay? So if this goes down according to party lines, yes, there will be 24 states 
that vote for Biden and 26 states that vote for Trump in a congressional contingent election. Guess who wins? But interestingly enough, the Constitution says the top three candidates have to be placed in the pool, not just two. They don't care about political parties. They said the top three candidates. So possibly, uh, I guess, I don't know who the number three would be, but I'm guessing that would probably have been Bernie Sanders. So he's probably going to be thrown in there as well. But there's going to be three people running for president in that contingent election, which is what I predict is going to happen. That is their entire goal right now. They know what election they can win. They know they can't win the popular election. They know they can't win the electoral college election. So they said, but we can win the congressional contingent election. Therefore, our plan will be to get a congressional contingent election and legally, lawfully win the presidency of the United States. There is one ray of hope in this. Uh, the 20th Amendment changed the, the procedure for the um, contingency election because they had a problem with this in the past, and I guess the election of 1800, where the um, lame duck or losing Congress was the one that got to have the presidential election and they really didn't like that. So now they changed the dates. They made sure that the new Congress is seated before the contingent election happens. So in that case, it's the new Congress that has the presidential election, not the old one. And in that case, there is a chance that the Democrats will take over uh, one of the gubernatorial races or one of the delegations. And if that's the case, then they have a chance of winning the congressional presidential election. But this is the goal. This is why it's not really chaos. It's all planned. It's always been planned. They knew about this a year ago. This has always been the plan. And it's 100% legal. He's going to challenge the popular vote. Okay. Then if he can get enough swing states, uh, not, and there are enough Republican legislatures in the swing states to um, not certify their elections. They have a pa essentially, I think, 30 days, but the law really allows them to go all the way up to inaugural day uh, to, to certify the election. But if they don't, uh, there are also some strange situations where the state legislature is Republican, but the governor is Democratic, Wisconsin being one of these situations, I think Michigan too. But in that case, it's a little strange because it's the governor that has to certify the election, not the state legislature. So if that's the case, then, um, well, you're going to see some fighting in those states about who's going to certify the election. And even if the election is not certified, uh, who is going to send the delegate to vote in the congressional election. And under those situations, you can see it's going to get fun. Um, but like I said, this may look like chaos, but it's not chaos. It is 100% planned. And why the news isn't telling everybody about this, I don't know. And you, quite honestly, should be angry about that because I can see this coming a mile away. There's three presidential election, possible presidential elections. Of course, Trump is going to pick the one that he could win and focus on that one. This isn't amazing. This is not a shock. 
This is just rational behavior. At this point in time, if the congressional election was to happen today, Trump wins. There are 26 uh, Republican delegates, delegations, and 24 Democratic ones. He wins the presidency. This has happened three times before. One of them where they won only by one. Oh, and the Senate gets to have the vote on the vice president in that situation. The House of Representatives has an election for the president, and the Senate has an election for the vice president. Well, now things get really, really fun. Because if, if the Democrats are able to flip the Senate, can you see what happens? Trump becomes president, okay? But the Senate then chooses the vice president, and if the Democrats control that, they will choose the vice president. And that, my friend, is going to be a circus in the White House with a Democratic vice president and a Repub and Trump as president. Oh, wow. Who needs Netflix? I just, I'm just going to look at the headlines every day and see what craziness people... For me, this is all just entertainment. I don't care. Um, I just don't care. But uh, it, it, it is fun to watch. It's fun to watch. This is all written down. This is all in the Constitution. This is all obvious for anybody who can do an inquisitorial analysis. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>